we like that. We like to be in the center, what they There's call a box. the box. There's a box on the floor? Yes. You want to be in the box. You want to be in the box. Everybody wants to be in the you box. You want to stay in the box. Yes. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> a trophy. Yes, bitch, okay? exactly. Boss bitch. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Boss Bitch Radio. Today, we're going to talk about NPC rules, contest criteria, everything you need to know about bikini, wellness, and figure. So if you're curious, stick around. We're going to dive in. How do you feel about that today? I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about this before. I think we sprinkle it in to well, other episodes, but we're, we're like, in a deep dive today. We're like super into it right now. Girls are on their second show most of them this year. So it's just exciting right now for us. It's very exciting. I think it's important for people to understand what goes into it. So I think this episode will be a really good deep dive as far as what they're looking for. And when we talk about what they're looking for, we're talking about the NPC. So yes, National Physique Committee, which is the top amateur physique organization in the world, then uh, wow. that leads into IFBB Pro. So this is generally the governing body that is holds the clout in the bodybuilding world. I feel so... I guess I should have asked this earlier. NPC is all over the world, correct? I believe there is an international version. I could okay. be wrong. Don't quote me different. on that. Okay. Yes. So we're saying more or less in like the United States. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go in depth about all of the divisions and what they're looking for specifically, but we are going to go in, in depth depth. Okay, if that's even a thing. <laughs> even deeper in right. depth. We're going to go super duper in depth into the posing, the stage presentation, your presentation overall from head to toe, because beauty is a component as well. The training, the diet, the supplementation, and also the mental preparedness. We're going to go into that on a in-depth webinar that is going to be next Wednesday, the 17th of July. So if you're not registered yet, you need to find that link. Yes, find Get that registered, link. Get registered, hang out with us. It'll be at 5.30 p.m. PST. It'll be me, Amanda, and also Coach Alicia. We'll be going through all these things in fine detail because there is a lot that goes into it. Yes, Live, y'all. So if you join us, then you can hop in and join the Q&A and chat box, everything. It's going to be really great. Yeah. And ask all the questions. So we have athletes competing this weekend locally. We have six going into a show in Sacramento here. So, you know, I'm waking up every morning to text messages and looking over bodies. And so criteria is always front and center in my brain. It's peak week. It's peak week. So we wanted to make sure we're like talking about competitions. We're like, we still get a lot of questions and people who are interested in competing, and I don't think they realize what goes into it. Right. And well, I thought, well, we, we have to... been talking about it. So it yes. creates a little bit of a buzz. Right. And we just want to make sure that people aren't going into this blindly, right? Because there is a lot. I feel like whenever I get a new competitor and I'm like, listen, I, these are the things that are going to happen. I feel like with the webinar, it's going to be said when you're like, mm, you should go watch this. Yeah. And we can point people back to it after it's over. So even if you can't make the webinar, make sure to find the link in either the show notes or our Instagram bios and at least sign up for it. We'll resend out the replay and all that Subscribe. fun stuff. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> um, but let's get started. I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. So let's start with the bikini division. So before I dive in, we're going to go like five steps back because people need to <laughs> oh realize... Wait a that, minute. Yes, while they all wear bikinis, <laughs> the name of this first kind of entry level division for the bodybuilding world yeah. is bikini. Then we right. have wellness and we have figure, and yes. then it moves up in muscularity. And there are other divisions women's bodybuilding, women's physique. We're just going to cover the three sort of main ones that are, are generally on our agenda. Yeah. Those are our clients, our avatars, right? You were going to say something before. That I got... was what I was going to say. Okay. I was like, wait, come yes. back. Yes. So with bikini, let's talk about what body type generally suits the bikini division. So just like a natural walking around woman that is not a bodybuilder yet. Yes. Okay. So most of these girls that fit the bikini division are going to typically be 
smaller framed, right? Naturally petite. That's, I guess, the the better way to describe it. Genetically lean. Generally, yes. (laughs) Doesn't always have to be. It does not always have to be because, you know, we never thought it. And these are just was going to hit the stage and she did too. And these are just our opinions as far as being coaches and obviously what you see over time with clients that are winning or or placing pretty high. Right. Is that your typical bikini girl is going to have smaller joints, smaller frame, and we can work with the physique and make that into a symmetrical body, right? Like everything is symmetrical. We have like that X frame that they're looking for. You know, they're not incredibly jacked and muscular, but they do have to have some muscle. Yeah. Right. Of course. If you don't have muscle, there is no shape. Right. We need some shape. And so I think sometimes where people get it wrong is like, oh, I'm going to do this bikini contest. I've never lifted weights before. And let me just like start now. And like, I need 12 weeks to be ready. Right. Yeah. And we know. I mean, it could happen. You could do it. It would be good. It wouldn't be great. I don't know if you would be happy with what you get after that. Yeah, because it's not just a skinny contest. No, I um actually have just started a few new girls that they've just started getting into lifting. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to have to lift for a while before we decide that we're going to put you on stage. So if this is something that you've been thinking about, I think you need to get on that webinar so you can get all the tidbits that we're not going to give you today. Right. And we have had some women come to us. I know I have had many women come to me and maybe their starting point was over 200 pounds, right? Hi. I have a few girls. Starting point was over 200 pounds. And we thought, oh, you know, maybe wellness, maybe bikini, which we're going to get into wellness in a second. But the reality of it is, is there was a, you know, it was a body fat to muscle ratio. And once we dropped a lot of body fat, they were not fit for the wellness division. Meaning there was not enough muscle on the body. Right. So it is possible for you to be 200 pounds and do bikini, but know that your journey is, you you know, you have quite a journey ahead of you to get down to where you need to be for stage, to be stage ready and have a stage ready physique. So conditioning. Yes. Conditioning. So can we, can we say what conditioning is? Right. So conditioning is going to be the level of leanness that you need for each division. Okay. Right. So how, and that's, that's, that's just a word we throw around in the industry. That's like how, you know, how lean are you? How ready are you for stage? Right. Right. And each division has a different amount of leanness needed, but four things that are very, that are common against all of these categories that they're being judged on is muscularity, Right. Okay. So the amount of muscle is going to vary between these divisions very greatly. Okay. The second thing is conditioning. So your conditioning, what we talked about, is going to be the level of leanness that you need for each division because each division requires a different amount of leanness. They don't all need to be super striated looking like beef jerky. They all kind of should it. A yes. little bit. Yes. <laughs> the third thing is going to be symmetry and balance. So muscularity is the important piece of it. But how is that muscle laying on your body? Is it symmetrical up and down? Is it balanced? Do you need to grow your shoulders so that way it offsets how big your lower body is? There's a lot of factors that go involved. Basically, are are your shoulders as big as your ass? (laughs) In some divisions, yes. Uh, In bikini, right? Are we we talking about bikini right now? Yes, not really. But they, (laughs) you you know, all these divisions. I can just think of somebody with butt cheeks on their shoulders Big, striated butt cheek shoulders. (laughs) So when you are being judged, these are the things they're considering and it's happening very quickly. Yeah. Right? And while you're presenting your physique. So muscularity, how much muscle for what division, conditioning, how lean do you need to be, symmetry and balance. Are you symmetrical where you need to be for said division? And then how are you presenting that on stage? How are you bringing that out and showing your final posing? Yeah. Posing presentation, how you look. Yes. Now, going back to the bikini division. Yeah. I get pumped about this because I have a lot of bikini athletes and she has, she does too. And she has some wellness athletes too, but I'm going to dive into the bikini division. That is what I have mainly right now, a foundation of muscle from head to toe, right? These are these are the rules coming strictly from NPC News Online. So you can find these all. I'll link it up in the show notes. We're just going to go over to it and go over, over in an audible version. <laughs> um, full round glutes, slight separation between your hamstrings and your glutes, 
not super striated, not super stringy, small around amount of roundness in the delts. So they do not want these gigantic pumpkin striated shoulders, which sometimes you will see girls on stage with. So a small amount of roundness, a conditioned core. Oh yeah, I have seen girls way too sh- too six packed that get yeah. dinged. So some people think like, oh, I, I was going to say that I need etching in my abs and I need to be super six packed out with like blocky abs, and that's not the case. So they do want you to have a touch of detail, but they do not want super deep etching typically in your abs. Okay, the overall look is going to be super important, which we'll go over in the webinar as well and talk very deeply about that because it's something we're super passionate about. But the overall look. So it is a muscly beauty pageant. That's my favorite part about it. Getting all dolled I'm like, up. It's and- just a muscle beauty pageant. I'm going to go up there and I'm just going to flex. Flex. And I'm going to dance around on my little heels and I'm going to feel so great. <laughs> I swear that's what it is. It is. It's my it's favorite like a, part. It's a muscle recital. It is a muscle recital. <laughs> so with that in mind, you have to bring your best, best overall look. So for us, I like to know what is your hair going to look like? How oh. are you doing your hair? Right. Yeah. Because there are classic looks to bodybuilding. I'm not going to get super detailed, but we're, you know, we want to talk about makeup, your suit, your tan, your heels, your jewelry, everything, right? Yeah. The final physique. Tan. We see all the things yes. on, with our competitors. We have them run it by us. We're like, what does your suit look like? What color are you picking? What kind of earrings are you wearing? Everything. Yeah. Because I, I, tell a lot of people, you know, when you step on stage, you are a representation of not only yourself, but us as a brand too. Yeah. And, you know, we're known for like being (laughs) very on point with our girls and their posing and like making sure that everything is dialed in. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you are in the US. Like you're sending us posing videos. We're picking apart all your shit and we're like, redo that. Right. So these things are all super important in the judging. Now, They do not, the things they do not want to see on bikini athletes, they do not want to see a hard amount of density in your muscle where you're going to be seeing squared off glutes, which is is very much in line more so with the wellness division. Right. They don't want to see that. They don't want to see a sharp tie-in. So the glute hammy tie-in. And they also do not want to see any kind of graininess, striations, dick Skin peeled <laughs> is not the way to be in bikini. Can, okay? can we explain striations? Striations are, I mean, it's we the don't visual, have any right it's now. The, yeah. <laughs> it's the visual appearance you will see when people are lean enough and their muscle is pressing hard enough against the skin and you start to see like divots and like lines. This. Yeah, it looks like, holy shit, you That's can see badass. all, they look like an anatomy chart. Yes. Right. I've been told that before. Yeah. Long time ago (laughs) for a minute. Right. So that is not what they're looking for in bikini. Now, people can go too far one way or the other. Right. right? They can get too lean because their coach is just like, let's get you leaner, 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 because leaner means better. That is not the case for bikini. And then people who are too soft and like, they just, they needed more time to diet. Yeah. Right. Or they yeah. didn't diet hard enough or they didn't stick to their diet. Right? Correct. So that's sort of where you find, you know, the ends of the spectrum. So you you have to really hit the Goldilocks spot with bikini and it's a challenge. Yeah. I personally think it's the harder division to, and Coach, Nail. Coach Adam and I were talking about that. Oh, you know, yeah. We're buddies, you guys are buddies now. now. But uh, we were talking about that. It's really an art form. And I feel like it's a harder division to nail down for athletes than wellness and figure. I truly do. I also feel like it's like that for, you know, Sandy and them when they're doing all of the pro shows because you'll notice, I mean, yes, Ashley K wins a lot of shows. Yes. But. They're always moving depending on who they're competing with. Like Ashley doesn't always win. Sometimes it's Jen. A lot of the times when they get, you know, qualified for Olympia, they don't compete anymore. Yes. Because they don't need to. They already made it where they needed to. Right. But you see the placings move a lot. Yes, they will move them around. It gets very, it's like splitting hairs really with those bikini girls, Mm -hmm. right? The pro division for sure. Right. I mean, even in the NPC, when there's two girls up there and they both look great, like their bodies look great, everything's symmetrical. At that point, you know, they're just picking who they like better and who has better presentation and who, who, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, 
who's owning this. I mean, it comes down to little fine details, right? Getting um, the attention. I think also to, you know, and you can tell me what you think, but I think a lot of times in the pro rankings, when a lot of these girls are p- competing quite frequently, yeah, they're coming in front of the same judges frequently. So Sandy, Tyler, Tamer, like some of these big coaches that are usually coaching pros. And then when they sit with a judge and they say like, okay, give me feedback. And then they go back and they fix the thing. And then they get in front of that judge again. It's almost... I mean, this could be like implied, but it's almost a rapport homework, right? That they're Look like, what I did. Like judge will say like, okay, yep, she worked on that. Great. Like, let's move her around. You can see the difference because she was also up against so-and-so who we told to do this, but that doesn't look like it's changed. Like this is, if I was a judge, these are the things that I would be thinking about, right? <laughs> this is what we do when we're sitting in the front row. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the pretend judge. <laughs> yes. I'm like, oh, she looks better this season. Like, yes, it makes yeah. sense. Right. So that is something that, you know, you're, you're, working with is making improvements and people, you know, judging is moving you around based off of your symmetry balance, all the things. Yeah. Okay. Next division. Wellness. I think we said all we needed to say about bikini. I feel that. Are we doing wellness or figure next? Yeah. Let's dive into wellness. Okay. Wellness. So wellness, what body types generally fit wellness? Because I think we talk about this often, Yes. But I think the assumption is, well, I have really big legs. I think I'd be better for wellness. So can you dispel that myth, please? It's it's not that you have big legs. It's that you have more athletic legs, more muscle on the lower half. And then your upper body is just a little bit smaller. You want to be kind of like... Bikini top. Bikini top and a wellness bottom, which is like tree trunks, okay? We want to grow some tree trunks. But also your glutes have to match your quads. It's... It's like a sign. I don't know. It's crazy yes. to me when I look at it because there's a lot of women, especially being a trainer trainer in the studio, they're like, I'm quad dominant. And so their glutes are not as big as their their quads. Right. Some of them are glute dominant. So they got no quads. And it's like, okay, now we need to kind of figure that out, which is probably why I really love wellness because it's it's like a dance between yes. quads and glutes. Okay. Yes. So it's a smaller upper half against a larger lower half, but not necessarily if you're carrying more fat down there. That's why when she said earlier, we were talking about how, you know, we kind of have some girls that might be well keeny. We don't really know what they are until we start losing some fat. And then we notice, oh, okay, well, maybe you don't have the bigger lower half that we thought you had for the muscle and we've burned most of that off. So now you're going to fit better into a bikini standard instead. Yes. But symmetry conditioning. So obviously smaller up top, bigger on the bottom with wellness. It's, it's, it's lean. She's lean. Okay. They usually say that you don't, once we get into the NPC rules, they're going to say that they don't want striations, but it's getting borderline. They are pushing the envelope. It's getting borderline. Okay. And yeah, I Con- feel like Con- conditioning is is pretty intense for I, wellness. <laughs> I I had like a did you hear it, see that? I just yeah. had like a flashback to all of the cardio. Yes, that, and I was like, Ugh, I had a yeah. little I had a little tweak out mode. Um, but you so short circuited for I did a second. A little bit. I was like, oh god. Um, with the body type though, so typically these are going to be athletic ladies that have been playing like soccer, you know, a lot of like softball players too, even though like sometimes they have a bigger upper body. It's just, they were more athletic going through things. Now for me, I was not into sports as like a kid, but I cheerleaded for a long time, but I was a base. So that means I had to use my legs to throw people in the air. So I've always been just a little bit more lower body. And plus, when I started training, you know, like working out in the gym with my trainer in the beginning, that is when I just started lifting heavy. The more I lifted heavy, the more I liked it. And then my legs were just like, yep, let's go. They are ready. Yeah. And I think genetically for you, because obviously I coached you, but genetically speaking, the way that your joints line up, your clavicle, like I look at all the things. So when I do physique assessments or potentially take on new clients or want to make recommendations or whatever, I'm not looking at just like the body fat. I'm looking at your joints. I'm looking at how long your clavicle is. You know, if you sit my daughter and I next to each other, oh my she God. has a long clavicle. Yeah. Okay. She, I, I hate to say it, but now. she is definitely, she's wider than she you now. She definitely is a wellness upper body. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, uh, figure, sorry, yes. sorry, figure upper body. But you you don't, right? You have this petite, more petite frame right yeah. up top. And 
when you first started training with me and we thought, okay, you know, you're going to compete and all these things. And we're just like, you're not bikini or figure at all. No. Right? Like you were neither. <laughs> and it was so frustrating. And I was like, I don't know what we're going to do with you. I just lift it. Yes. And so I thought, okay, well, we'll figure it out. And then eventually wellness came along. So for your frame, your physique, how long your femurs are, how much muscle you have, everything, it was like, It was made for you. Yeah, I was so excited when that came finally to the States. So wellness has been bigger overseas for a while. You know, Brazil, Brazil, the Brazilian women, you know, they they got it going on on the lower body. Okay, so I'm just like trying to keep up over here. But it's only been in the States for I'm going to say what, three years. That's how long I've been competing. So three years. I think they started one year before I competed. I think the the wellness show that I did in Reno was the first wellness show that they did that was local to us. Yeah. And totally not related. But if you (laughs) are so curious, no, it's related as to like, okay, well, well, what does the training look like, which we're going to talk about on the webinar? I need you to just Google Brazilian wellness training (laughs) and tell me you're not scared. Okay. (laughs) Because these girls train insane. They right? train they are until they're crying. They are definitely cray cray. Yeah. Like, I want to train like that, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. I will cry. I mean, I think I'm getting close. I but I, I, I stop. Yes. I, re- <laughs> completely unrelated, but remember I was telling you about my training the other day where my teeth were starting to chatter? Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, I think I finally found it. You found the wellness I psychotic it. training fucking right through your soul. I totally did. So now I'm I'm feeling a little fucking badass lately. Yeah. So the wellness symmetry, just to sort of wrap that up, right, is somebody had asked in the comments here on Instagram about, so does that mean you have a bigger bottom? Kinda. Right? You have more muscle on the lower half of your body. Yes. Not a bigger bottom per se. If you've been training for a while, like years, and you've got a bigger lower bottom, if you've been training correctly, then you probably have some muscle under there if you haven't seen it yet. If you are very new and you have a lower body and you just started training, I'm sorry, but you probably are bikini and not wellness. Right. There are plenty of girls who were not genetically suited for the wellness division that have merged from bikini to wellness, but it takes time. Yeah, you need to go into an improvement season. You need to eat. You need to grow. You need to maybe feel a little bit uncomfortable with some of the extra pounds that you have on there because it's the only way you're going to put muscle on. So I've been training for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. And I've always loved training lower body. So it's not like I've been thin forever. And that I think has really aided in the fact of that I'm literally a tree trunk on the bottom. You like are both two tree trunks. Yes. <laughs> with marshmallows at the top. <laughs> yes. And the training that's necessary. So this is why when when I do physique assessments and I'm making recommendations for the client as far as what I feel they'd be suited for, I always usually finish each physique assessment video, which I'm sure you've heard me because I know you watch these. Yeah. Is that even if you don't go with us for coaching, please yield my advice. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like stop training your whole body. If you want to do wellness and you already have a developed upper body, please start focusing on your lower half. Don't be doing dumb shit like chest, like all these things. Right. So it's very important that if you're going to compete, if you even have it kind of on your radar, that the work should be starting now, even if you're like by, you know, five years from now, great. You need to start that now. (laughs) <laughs> this is why we're going over the rules, you guys. Yes. This is why. Exactly. So let's just f- finalize the conditioning for wellness. Um, I know we talked a little bit about it, but it's definitely leaner than bikini. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I think it's... it's. So if we put bikini on like a level, right? And we're thinking, okay, the leanness of bikini is like a three on a scale of, well, let's go 10. 10. 10. Okay. So bikini is like a scale of probably like five. Okay. 10 of being, leanness. How is 10, 10 like? being lean as fuck. Okay. Okay. Yes. And then I think wellness is probably somewhere in like 
An the eight. seven or eight. Yeah. And then we go into figure, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. I would say that's probably like a nine. Yeah. And then yeah, the higher you go, the higher the leanness gets. Yes. And the hardness and the density and the graininess and everything like that. So this is our very um, non-professional scale for you on how <laughs> lean you need to fucking be. Okay. Because you're going to be hungry. Yeah. So when I was interviewing Coach Adam yesterday, we were talking about how really right now, bikini has evolved from what it was in the beginning, which was just like, you know, you would see a girl, at, you know, at the grocery store or at a waitress and you'd be like, oh, she's cute. You know, put a bikini on her. She'd probably do a show this weekend kind right. of thing. Right. Not the case now. Not anymore. Today's bikini girls are what the figure girls look like when I used to compete back in figure in 2011 or 12. Right. right? So back then I would be like now a bikini girl. Right. Yes. And so it has majorly evolved. So that's why we're saying like, on the amateur level, you know, you don't need to be as conditioned and like ready and polished and everything. It's it's an amateur show. But when you go up into the pro ranks, for sure. So since we're on the topic of conditioning, I know we haven't gone to figure just yet. But do we want to kind of like touch on like body fat percentage that is needed for stage? Yeah, I mean, dive in. So I feel like... Okay, because we've been doing this for a while. We've been taking our body fats, usually typically super close to show. And if I'm being honest, so when I did wellness, I think I was, what, a few weeks out from my show and I was 11% body fat. Yeah, very, very lean. Very lean. That is super low. So if you know what your body fat is right now and say you're somewhere in like 30%, which is most of the population as of right now, um, unless you're like a leaner person just walking around, that is, you've got to lose a lot of body fat, okay? Yes. Um, Bikini girls, we think they're they're probably about the same. I feel like bikinis probably more in the thirteen ish range. Yeah, twelve, thirteen, probably. Yeah, wellness. You're looking nine to eleven. Yeah, I, you know, figure. I was on stage. My nine, eight. My, I mean, some of my body fat was like seven to nine percent. Oh yeah, Ridiculous. that one was a seven. Yeah. So, you know, you're getting into some really unhealthy levels of body fat, which is safe for another which podcast. Is much, but. We preach, y'all. We we say it's for a day. It's for a hobby. It's for a thing. It's not for forever. It's okay? a sport, so. for sure. So, so, yeah, wellness is definitely a notch up in terms of uh, leanness, yes. conditioning, muscularity, all that. So if you wanted to get a little bit more technical with our scale. <laughs> that, exactly. that probably helps a it's little the bit. Next step. That's the next step. Okay. Next division we're going to cover in the final one we're going to cover is figure. So we've talked about bikini. We've talked about wellness. We went over those, you know, criteria, symmetry, all that figure. Yeah. So figure is going to be a more muscular division. For those of you that don't know, I competed in figure most of my competitive life. I got my pro card in you figure. You did a great job at it. I fucking love it. You did a great job I'm a at figure it. girl at heart. but You are. Yeah. So with figure, you're looking at a structure that is more similar to bikini in that they're looking for that X frame, right? So broad across the shoulders, tiny waist, and then a symmetrical bottom. Uh, they are not looking for an imbalanced bottom like wellness. Yeah. They're definitely looking for muscularity from head to toe, right? So one of the mandatory poses for figure is a front lat spread and a back lat spread. So you have to have some back width and some back density, thickness, and it's all of those things. It's kind of like a Dorito yes. at the top. So a lot of the body types that are suited well for this division, which doesn't mean other body types can't do it, but you just have genetically... To grow. And, and this was my body type, genetically predispositioned to be a good candidate for this, was that I'm bigger up top than I am the bottom, right? right? So I don't have super wide hips and, you know, I don't have a pear shape with a petite upper frame. I have a wider clavicle, all those things. So those things come into consideration because that's how your, it, it shows how your muscle is going to lay on your frame, on your skeleton, right? Right. And how much you're capable of building too. Now, Again, lots of petite girls do this, so it's not just this is the only body type that can, well, but this is what you're set up genetically better for it. I mean, in reality, you've competed in both bikini and figure. So that goes to show that you don't necessarily have to pick one thing because of what your body type is like or where you're at. Yes. And I think if you have naturally this type of frame, it does make you, it easier for you to flex between the two and kind of decide where you want to go. But your strategy will change 
based off of how much muscle you have. Right. right? A lot will change too. That would also mean that your training is going to change. Yes. And we do see a lot of clients who come to us and they really, really want to do figure because they're more sporty, right? They're more athletic. It's less like dancy, cutesy. Yes. You still have to have swag. (laughs) You still have to have swag. There's no way around it. You cannot just be is that why you did a so wet well? dish rag? Yes, because you're I, dripping in swag. I think I'm dripping in swag, and that probably had something to do I'm with it. I'm pretty that. sure. But nonetheless, your body type is important going into that, and knowing whether you're going to be a good candidate for training for something for figure. If you have never, if you've never weight trained, or you're super new or novice, that is probably not where you're going to start competing. Right. That's probably something you would eventually work yourself up to. Right with time. And if you were going to compete, depending on like if you want to compete now, obviously you're most likely going to start in the bikini, but then you're going to need to take a really long off season so you can grow your upper body if figure is where you can get within the time that you're willing to take off to grow. Yes. Now, I do see a lot of girls who will merge to figure sooner when they are really upper body dominant, mm-hmm. right? Like they Again, they played sports, they were in uh, some kind of athletics, and they have a good balance of muscle all over, but they have a good genetically built upper body, right? right? Or they've been training for a long time. Maybe they train old school bodybuilding style like I have for a long time, and they've built some serious upper body, right? But then the problem comes to the lower half because the lower half definitely needs to also be muscular as well. I, the lower body on these figure girls is insane so crazy i'm like wow y'all got big ass fucking quads how do i do that yes and then now they're turning around and they've got big ass booties too that happened to me and i was like one thing is not like it used to be right right so and now i feel like figure girls are training legs just as hard as they are upper body yeah, you you have to. You know, that's one of that was one of my <laughs> handicaps uh is my quads, you Which know, is why for, we made you hang out with me. Yeah, for the figure division. So, with figure, you know, you're talking about your your delts, you know, being capped, probably having a little bit of a tie-in on your shoulders, biceps, triceps, back. Like your training is very spe- uh, specific for your back, right? Mm-hmm. Because you are showing that yeah. In the other divisions, you are you not showing your back. So it's not to say you don't train your back in those divisions. If you're very new and novice to weight training, 100% you should. But if you have a very developed back, you probably don't need to mess with that, right? Right. With figure, you know, I'm strategizing all angles of exercises to grow the lats from head to toe. <laughs> okay. And your training is definitely a lot more detailed. The training is very detailed, which oh, we'll yeah. talk about in the webinar. But like hitting all the little tiny in betweeners, all the tiny little intricacies, all the little tiny in betweeners so of your physique. Figure is a, an amazing, amazing category, especially since I've had a front row for years of watching it like come to play and yeah. then become a pro. Yeah. Oh my god, I did that. That's um, you. But <laughs> conditioning with figure is the next level up from wellness. So we talked about bikini being, yes, you need to be lean. There needs to be evidence of muscularity but and there's conditioning. A border. But there's a border where you cross it, you go too far, you're like beef jerky, it's too lean. <laughs> There's wellness. It's kind of like the Goldilocks of the two, right? You don't want to be incredibly striated and all the things, but the level of leanness is pushing the envelope towards figure and conditioning. Yes. And then figure where you're really, you're getting super, super lean. Now with figure, they are also judging you in different poses, right? You come out and do a solo routine. Wellness is very much the same. So you got to learn a little bit different with, with posing, but all of it still the beauty component is there. Yeah. Yes. So they are also looking for what they call a V taper, which we talked about with the back, right? The back pose. And I think this is where I see a lot of women fall short, right? As amateurs Uh is their backs are not developed enough for the figure division. Wide enough and like muscular enough. All of it wide enough. They don't know how to lat spread. They don't have the density. They just don't have the balance with all the muscles. They don't have rear delts. Like all of these things have to be considered when you're a figure athlete. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot more and more in these amateur competitions that like, where's everybody's backs? Not to be a dick, but (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, you have to take your back training super fucking serious. Yeah. Muscle separation, they're looking for in figure, a small amount, not super crazy like the bodybuilders, like the bodybuilding division for females. But again, rounded delts, a quad sweep, right? So lean enough, they can see a quad sweep, depth and density to your back. And again, that balance of all that symmetry. So they don't want super striated. They don't want super grainy or any kind of muscular thickness that is associated with women's physique or bodybuilding. So again, it's a very so fine like line. More bubbly for like the how big it is, like how bubbly this muscle is, like right. how thick she how, is. How thick she is. Gotcha. Right? Okay. They don't want too much thickness. And you see that a lot, you know, in the upper levels of bodybuilding women's physique, you know, in terms of women's physique, generally comes with a lot of like mature muscle, a lot of times PEDs, not saying all the time, but you're pretty, you're pretty sure that's probably happening. And when it, you push the envelope with that, sometimes you can go too far, right? Too yeah. far that you're like, mm, you're looking like women's physique, right? Right. And I, I think that goes to show as well, like sometimes there is not, you know, a physique category at said show. Or if there is, you'll notice that there's probably not very many competitors. And so they cross over from physique into figure as well. Yes. It's a different posing. It's different things like that. But they're similar. Yes. But not quite the same. And somebody asked on Instagram, how important is in the back musculature is being 3D versus wide? Both. Both. <laughs> both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. Um, if you have a nice 3D back, but it's not wide, you're going to get marked down. If you have a wide back, but we can't see your muscles, you're also going to get marked down. So it's really both. Both of them. Both of them, same time. Both of them. Yeah. And, you know, all in all, they are very different categories, but very, you know, similar in terms of like what we're doing, right? Like we're still, we're, we're weightlifting. Yeah. You know, they're we're all, dieting. We're all in this bucket. We're just in different parts of the bucket, right? Yes. Like these girls are training this more often. These girls are training this more often. These girls are training this more often. Some of them are are eating more, but that just goes for your body type more than anything. That not just like what category you're in. Yeah, and I think too, you know, a lot of people just say like, "Oh, well, I just want to do this division." Like I just saw it and I just love it and I want to do it. Right? Like I was guilty of that. <laughs> you know, shiny objects, and I'm like, oh, wellness. I want to look like that. <laughs> But it doesn't necessarily, just because you want to doesn't mean you should. Correct. Okay? Yes. So my hope is that like you don't get your heart set on something that, you you know, sure, if you want to do it for shits and giggles, just to be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, train like a wellness competitor and I'm going to get up there even if I don't look like one. Great. But that's a lot of wasted time when you could be honing in on something that is better suited for you. That or taking more time to grow into the actual category. Definitely. So because like, remember, that was that one time you were like, yeah, I'm going to be a wellness competitor. And yeah, your coach was like, yeah, no. Yeah, you're not. You're going to have to take like two years off. Yeah. If and, you want to play that game. And the reality of it is, and this is a perfect example, is I had finished my pro debut and I thought, well, I want to shift to wellness. I my upper body, I'm just tired of beating it down. I was over it. Your like shoulder shoulders was were killing me. You. All the things. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to train for wellness. I feel like I can make it happen, right? It seed some other pros that had done it. I'm like, okay, I'm coming from figure. Some of these girls came from bikini. Right. I'm like, okay, I think I can make it happen. I had a couple girls tell me like, yeah, you know, I did some posing with a couple of wellness uh, pros that had also done the same thing, right? Like had merged from bikini to wellness. And yeah, I'm just not genetically set up for that. And the reality is that I'm 45 now. At the time I was, what, 44. So this was last year. My training history is very long, okay? I haven't just been training for like two years. I've been training for 100 years. So the reality of it is, is I've probably met my maximum genetic potential for growth right. on my quads, Yeah, right? So anything beyond what I have on my body now It's is, probably not going to get any bigger. Oh, it could, by way of steroids. I just am not, <laughs> but I'm just not interested in partaking anymore. Right, of course. So I came to a crossroads of like, well, do I want to try to go against the odds and make this happen? Because you know, if I do something, I'm going to go all in, right? 
and put my my health at more risk for for this goal, which I would love to, you know, go all in, in, which would mean a lot more steroids than I was willing to do and that I was already doing. Right. And I just was not willing to do that. So here we are. Great. Not doing wellness and just being a lifestyle person who wants a big ass. It's working. It's great. It's I working love it. great. I You're love doing it. fantastic. Thanks, friend. So I think we covered all the things. Did we? Oh, wait. Oh, what? My what? question. What was your question? Um, Remember when the judges, they'd be telling you that um, you look flat? Yes. Can we talk about that? Yeah. So when, you, when you're competing, when you're dieting down, a lot of times when you surpass the level of leanness that you need for said division, right? So let's just speak about like right now I have an athlete that was that's competing this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and my goal with my girls is I always want to be have them ready a couple weeks ahead of time. Right? right. And you know that's not fun and it's not like who wants to be in prep and be ready and like waiting, right? We had some great examples of this the last show where we were ready ahead of time. And I so I have an athlete who has been dieting for some time. And she's been ready for some time. Yeah. And she's very flat. Now, what that means is her body fat is very, very low and her muscles have like zero pump pump to them. They're right? not getting poofy they, anymore. So when she poses, she doesn't have a nice like round shoulder. It's there. You see her arms are jacked. She's shredded. She's lean. Yeah. But we're flat, right? When she turns around her back pose, a little bit of striations on the top because she's very, very lean. And glutes are flat a little bit doesn't mean her muscles are gone it just means she needs to be fed up a little bit there's nothing in there to get them to go (sighs) to volumize them which is carbs water salt okay this is the the magic combination (laughs) but the magic combination varies from person to person right so getting someone from flat to full without spilling, which these are all bodybuilding words, by the way, this is the bodybuilding dictionary, is a little bit of a a dance. And you have to play around with that and find the sweet spot for every person. Because if you give them too much carbs to fix the problem of being flat, then they spill. And then that just means you're not seeing any lines anywhere. They just look watery. There's like a layer you can kind of see they've lost their definition. Right. So then that means you just gone a little too far. You've gone a little too far. So peak week is a, a dance of finding this sweet spot for everybody, making sure that they're not too flat or spilled over. Now, one thing John Jewett talks about a lot in his uh, female contest prep program that I, I took is that sometimes you have to risk being flat to come in in enough condition to pull off the look. Right. And so sometimes that's a risk that you take, right? Like it's a give and take. So it's almost, you would rather come in a little bit flat than spilled over because you don't want to be the one that doesn't look conditioned on stage for specific divisions. Well, I mean, also the other way as well is like in peak week, you don't want to still be fucking working. Yes. Like I've been there. Right. You, I was still grinding on peak week. Yes. And and that's ideally, that is not ideal. No, it's not. That is not that's ideal. That's my own damn fault. Okay. That's yeah. because we went a little Coco Bongo in the off season and that's, and I we laugh about it a little but, bit more time. <laughs> we laugh about it, but it's not fun. Not while it's you know, happening now. It's, you know, ideally we have a peak week where, you, you know, your cardio has been tapered, your food is slightly coming up a little bit, your steps are coming down, you're sleeping a little bit better, your training intensity is not as intense. This is not the week to do dumb shit. (laughs) And your inflammation is coming down because you're likely having ran your body down, you know, all the way on all firing on all cylinders for quite some time. And this is the time to let that all subside. So you look rested on stage your body feels good. You don't cramp up like nothing weird is happening and you present your best look based off of these factors. But it is, it is a balance. It is. Yeah. One we love. (laughs) You're not wrong. So I think we covered all the juicy details on the NPC rules, regulations, what they're looking for. And we're going to, like I said, deep dive on Wednesday July the 19th at 5.30 p.m. PST. 
The link is in my bio over on Instagram. You also find that in the show notes. We are going to go in deeper as far as, that's what she said, um, (laughs) posing, stage presentation and presence, the beauty aspect of it, the training that is needed for shows for each divisions, like how it varies, the diet for each division, right. the supplements and the mental preparedness, because that's also a huge component of it. So we'll touch on all those things for those that are like, what does it take to compete? You yeah. Know? I mean, even if like you're just curious, hop on, come Zoom with us while we boss bitch radio it on the Zoomies. And you never know, you might learn some things that you can even just apply to your lifestyle instead of, you know, even if you're not into competing and you're just curious, hop on, come hang out with us, bring your water, okay? Because that's what we do here. We stay hydrated. Yes. Okay. Well, real quick before we peace out, we did get a question in the question box that says, what is the reason for moving the girls around? Is it better to get moved forward center? It's a really good question. That is a good question. Yeah. So when it comes to them moving the girls around on stage, they are deciding who's going to be first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, sometimes sixth, if there's only six girls in that division. So generally, if you are on the outsides and they are moving you more towards the center, that's a good sign. We like that. We like to be in the center, what they there's call a box. the box. There's a box on the floor. Yes. You want to be in the box. You want to be in the box. Everybody wants to be in the you box. You want to stay in the box. Yes. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> a trophy. Yes, bitch, okay? exactly. So yes, you want to be center and that is how that is exactly what's happening one thing too is like some shows can be bigger so you might be in the second call outs and still be in the box but depending on how many people were up there which typically would be five on the first call outs if you're in the box on the second call outs you're typically sixth and so on and so forth as it goes by so you know when you are on the outsides and the bring you in yes you're probably going to smile a little bit harder. Definitely. (laughs) And I always tell girls, you know, after prejudging, I generally know how my girls place. And so after I They're like, how do you know? After I see everything, like, they're like, I don't know what happened. I don't know where I was. I don't even know if I was on the planet Earth. Yeah, when you're up there, you just look at the judges. Don't look at people next to you. Just pose your ass off. Yes, please. It's like a little bit of a blackout moment. We're probably going to get really tangenty on the webinar. I can't fucking wait. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but with that, you also can't take that experience of prejudging, which just for context, bodybuilding jo- shows generally have two portions. They have prejudging and finals. Most, if not all of the judging, except for the overalls, which is a whole nother subject, but happens at prejudging. Right. They've made most of their decisions at prejudging. Okay? If they change you in finals fucking hot dog if you go to the middle (laughs) (laughs) hot dog hot dog hot hot diggity dog dog. (laughs) yes but generally most of the judges are gone at finals let's be real there's usually like three left out of probably five to seven but with prejudging for for one example we have seen thinking one thing was going to happen and another thing happens my very first show i was my coach is like oh i think d i thought i think you got uh 11th out of like i don't know it was like 16 girls i feel like it was like 16 i think you got 11th and i was like oh okay i didn't really care i was like i'm just happy to have done this thing oh my god can't believe i did it right ended up with fifth wow have no idea how that happened not mad about it but again like i had second call outs so it it just depends. That's why you always have to be on your game on stage. It could be that you turned around and walked off. You let your glutes fall. You didn't keep your stage presence. You didn't keep your core tight. And then somebody else comes out and they're like, oh, wait a minute. Mm, Change my mind. Change my mind. I'm going to put that on the score sheet. And then at finals, that's going to be the final decision. So you can't take everything at face value when it's time for prejudging. Right. Yeah. yeah it's just a prediction. It's a prediction. You're like, and I'm not Stradamus. If you're, if you're <laughs> I'm like, it's going to happen. If you're in a good spot, you're just like, fingers crossed, bitch, I stay here. Yeah. And then when finals come, pose your ass off. And then hopefully, if you're in a good spot, you get to keep it. We love that. Yes, we do. All right. Well, hopefully you learned something valuable from this episode. If you did, 
please go over and leave us a five-star review on the iTunes. Yeah. I mean, also, if y'all don't follow us on Instagram yet, losers. Are we Just kidding? In, are we even friends? <laughs> are we even friends? So Amanda Glitters, that's me. That's me. Just kidding. That's her. And then uh, <laughs> Diane Flores underscore IFBB underscore pro. That is me. Come find me over on the gram. But if you found this useful, you found it helpful, it would mean everything to us if you would share it with one friend who is also a meathead or yeah. is curious about bodybuilding and wants to know the ins and outs. I hope this episode answered all those things for you and then some. And I think we're done. Yeah. Okay. Don't See you forget. on the next episode. Bye. 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 Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, Boss Bitches, real quick. I know we've just reached the end of another awesome episode of Boss Bitch Radio, and I'm hoping that you're having a blast listening to us and learning with us. But guess what? The fun does not have to stop there. If you are hungry for more things Boss Bitchery, fitness goodness, all the mindset stuff, all of the things that keep you motivated, you need to sign up for my newsletter. I know, I can't believe we've gone over 150 episodes and I have not mentioned once for y'all to be signing up for my newsletter because I've had a newsletter for 16 years. <laughs> Every week I send out some content. Usually it's a wrap up of some of the uh, podcast episodes with some snippets in there that's bite sized that you can carry with you in your, in your little pocket. But you wouldn't know unless you joined all the cool bitches be on my newsletter list, you know, and then you can just reply and we can chat. Those all go back to me, you know, like it is me. I do write the things. So I would love to continue to motivate you outside of this podcast. I would love to pop into your inbox occasionally. No worries. I'm not going to spam you. I don't eat spam. I'm not going to send spam. But there will be some LOLs and some content that you won't want to miss. So join our Boss Bitch tribe. I'm going to link up the newsletter list sign up form in the show notes, which if you haven't taken a peek at the show notes, you should probably do that. There's some good ass links in there. There's some discounts, fun shit. Go find the email newsletter link, put your name on there. And every week I'll be whispering sweet nothings to you in your inbox. And it's a great way for us to stay connected outside of the podcast. All right. I'll see you in your inbox soon.